So when we look at Genesis, the ninth chapter, before we go into these table of nations in the 10th chapter, we see that um, Ham, Shem, and Japheth have to um, walk out. Well, Ham and uh, Ham doesn't. He looks at his father's nakedness. So this is where we get cursed be Canaan. When we understand what Ham's uncovering of the father's nakedness, cursed be Canaan, and how um, the Hamites took over land or took land that was designated to Shem and to the portions of Shem. So this is why to this day we find a, a, a confusion when we look at these lands of Mesopotamia uh, where we'll find some of these uh, step ziggurat temples in these locations. These locations are making a great circle with the lands here of California and Mexico. So we can see how these stellas are applied to when we look at these travelers that are referred to as Asiatic Amu travelers. We can see how this connection with the Olmec and this, this location and these regions of these Semitic Hebrew uh, ancient travelers, pre-Diluvian and post-Diluvian travelers that came into these regions designed by the heavens to come into these regions, especially during this time now of the time of this tropical zodiac at the time of Taurus, which leads to the door or the of the Gemini. We understand the Gemini and uh, the hemisphere and the Tropic of Cancer in the summer and this portion where the sun goes into its peak. So this, this springing forth is the pre springing to the sun reaching into its northern peak. And this is what causes a, a winter season in the southern tropic during the time of the summer. The north experiences a summer and the southern tropic where during the winter solstice during this particular time uh, was the winter time. Now uh, in the southern tropic, uh, will, they will uh, be experiencing their winter. As during that time it was their summer uh, when it was the winter for us during the winter solstice during September, December 21st it was the summer in the southern tropic the sun was reaching its peak in the southern portion of the earth as you see here the tropics here Capricorn which is during this time of December 21st during this particular time where the southern crossings where men would use the reed style boats found in Peru and in uh, Lake Titicaca and in uh, Baja, California, where this reed style, this is where we get the Thule, right? If you understand the sons of Issachar and Tula in First Chronicles, the seventh chapter, it talks about the mighty men, the valiant men of the sons of Issachar. And why they were called valiant, mighty men, you have to understand their location and where they were located. And some of the temples that we find, the Temple of the Warriors and different things that led them to follow the, when you look at the Mayan long count, and the decimals and the connection with the, the Sumerian, uh, Sumeria and Mesopotamia, base counting systems, the different systems that we use to count for different metrics, whether it's lunar or solar, or it's a combination of both. These metrics were essential when we look at to the trespassing offerings and to measure uh, what one would owe another for sin and for crossing over to another man's land. So when we look at the history of these things of events in history you have to understand that there's a prehistoric mound building empire that before the the biblical flood in these times they designated a universal functioning based upon these star systems universally through all the different lands so that way during the sun and this procession and this timing no matter where the sun was along these tropical regions uh it would these teachings would would birth what we understand as a mother culture. So this mother culture eventually was demonized, um, right, to where we see now where how Jesus and the worshiping of the sun um, and the displacement of the, the, the family structure of the father, mother, and child has been divided and how one has been put against the other. When we understand life and death and its functions and its teachings and how the 24-hour time zones help map out the zodiacs each two hours, which makes a constellation. When you look at Enoch's calendar and you see the 91 days for each season, four 91-day seasons, and the calculation of that, when we understand the new moons and how those 
days weren't counted according to, so you have three for 90 day we understand the one day that wasn't counted or wasn't accounted in this particular calendar so you can kind of understand how the lunar right and the solar how these things were interactive right this is why you see things in the Enos calendar where the the beginning of the new season or the new month was not a day that was counted that first day this is what would remove four days right for the fourth season which would give you a 360 so we understand the 360 and the measures of pi and how these different measures of the twilight zero to six which measures civic six to twelve the nautical as you see the nautical sciences were essential to these ancient asiatic invaders who came into these lands of the gemini which is displayed on Narmer's palette Narmer's palette displays the gemini and coming into this land region of the gemini when you see Horus and the different significance of the 33, even used today, some for satanic understandings and purposes, but these things are, have a mathematical design and geometrics and power within their shape and how they function when they're in equal balance and, and what have you in size and measure. So when you look at Sudupu and the lands of the East and the ancients, the Kadim, these are in reference to these ancient lands of the Americas, which are aligned by time according to the zodiac so when we look at sri lanka and some of these lands go ahead, some of these lands that when they came into to uh these lands of india into the indus valley into mesopotamia the land of the orient when you look at king solomon they call these lands sometimes the ships of tarshish and other terms are used to describe these particular locations understand the significance of these locations when even when you look here in Kenya where uh, this Gemini and Taurus boundary separates um, so you got to understand the door to the new world or to the Western Hemisphere so these lands where Egypt and these regions against uh, 33 degrees they were a protection for those for the when you understand the distribution of the ancients from the time of Genesis the ninth chapter where we see that Japheth would try to deal in the tents of Shem we understand with Ham, how he tried to uh, uncover the nakedness of his father. And sometimes the nakedness is referred to as a woman, also land, and portions of land. So you have to understand, understand that. That is, a, that is key, too, when looking at uh, these particular land masses and how the tropics along the northern and south, right from the center of the earth, we understand the pole center and the center of the earth um, how that makes this great circle when you look at 60 degrees east, 120 degrees west, uh, 30 degrees east, and 150 degrees west, which leads into the, the regions of Hawaii. So when you look at this ancient Moroccan empire, right? We're talking about from Hawaii, from the islands, from the Pacific, and how they align with these regions of 30 degrees of the boundary of Taurus going into Gemini. These things, this is why the Big Kahuna, the teachings of the Big Kahuna, the fish, the Dagon, when you understand these tropics and these interchanges uh, of coming into these different times, this is why during um, the New World, or what was so-called after the Renaissance, right, in the New World, after 1492, they had this, what they called, it was the end of the Dark Ages. You have to understand, during the Dark Ages, why they called these times the Dark Ages, because they had, they weren't able to pass Taurus, or pass the 30 degrees until the time of the gym the gemini they, so this is why stories of christ talk about him going into egypt for protection from the idumeans and those that were in these regions of these 60 degrees to 30 degrees east these regions in the interior of africa the congo and these regions were a protection where um we understand the wars and the different and how easy it was for semitic beings to come into these lands and and come in and hide out at times from racial persecution and other persecutions at different times. Even during the time of the splitting of the kingdom, of the northern kingdom being removed out of the land, you find the northern kingdom dispersing amongst many different nations um, during this particular time, historically. So historically, these things help us give evidence of the travels of these ancient Americans and the ancient prehistoric mound-bending empire that civilized the world.